Ain't a woman alive that could take my mama's place. Tupac was so wise. It's our Mother's Day show on this brand new episode of Totally 80s and 90s Recall. Welcome back to the studio. If you're a new listener to this show, we are stoked that you found us. And for our returning listeners, it's awesome to have you back. Well, if you love all things 80s and 90s from music and movies to television and pop culture, then this is definitely the podcast for you. I am one of your hosts, David, joined as always by my good friend and a great son, Rob. Hey, Dave. Uh, I want to uh, give a shout out to our, I want to say hello. We always say hello. We always say hello. But I want to say hello to some of our listeners as we're... uh, accumulating more listeners okay so today i want to welcome all of our listeners that might be struggling with insomnia oh okay so here's a list of symptoms you might want to look for (laughs) is a disclaimer we are not trained medical professionals and our opinions in general really mean very little Uh but here you go so here's a list of symptoms you're having a you're having trouble trying to sleep yeah you've resorted to counting sheep Okay. Do people still really do that? Well, but those sheep are running out. Ah. Your eyes feel like they're going to (laughs) bleed. Your eyes are dried up. Uh Uh-huh. Your eyes might be bulging out of your skull. Your mouth is dry. Yes. Your face is numb. I see that. The clock is literally laughing in your face. Mm -hmm. You've got a crooked spine. Your senses are dulled. And you're past the point of delirium. Of delirium. So if you're experiencing any of those symptoms... We hope you find some relief with us today. Yes. But we want to let you know you're in the right place. You are in the right so place. So that's I want to reach out to all the people that are suffering from insomnia today. Well, hopefully not too much. Well, if they're suffering they from could insomnia. Be, they might be listening to it. As a way to at, put at, themselves yeah, to sleep. That's right. They can't sleep. They got up. They, I'm, I'm going to pop in a, pod, a podcast. For, hopefully we're not the reason they go back to sleep, though. Right? So. No. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. But anyway, so I want to reach out to our fans. I, I see that. Well... Uh, thanks for the hot tip there, not Dr. Rob. Uh, Mm -hmm. But on this podcast, Rob and I will travel back to the two decades that shaped not only our lives, but influenced the world for generations that followed. Each episode, we will develop and discuss lists of selected topics or perhaps identify a significant event, movie, or whatever we recall from growing up in the 80s and 90s, providing some awesome memories, fun, and of course, nostalgia along the way. With all that, Rob, what topic will we be covering for this episode? So today we are talking about uh, our favorite TV and movie moms. Yes. In honor of Mother's Day. In honor of Mother's Day. So, um, yeah, we're going to go over some of the ones that either made us laugh or made us feel good or we thought did a good job, right? So, well, first, shout out to our own moms. We wouldn't be here podcasting without them. A big shout out to our wives who are the mothers of our children. And without them... Uh, Rob and I probably wouldn't survive most days or function the way that we do. So it's a true uh, statement. That's true statement. True statement. <laughs> and a final shout out. Uh, am I ever using shout out? I'm not sure. But no. uh, to every parent figure, whether that's a mom, grandparent, mm-hmm. aunt, big sister, or whomever took the time to raise all of us wild 80s and 90s children, the lists we make today uh, take nothing away from anyone's actual caregiver. This is just a fun look at what the TV and movies of the 80s thought moms should look like for us. Um, but were they right? Yeah. No, I, 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 uh, yeah, and I know our moms listen. Oh, do, do yeah. you, does your mom listen? Do I don't you know? know. I know my mom does. Oh, okay. So, yeah, and so she, she is. She will hear this. She will so hear this. She will appreciate that very much. She will be happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you did your research, as mm-hmm. I just asked, going over, however you put your list together, uh, did they do a good job portraying moms in the eighties and nineties? Um, but, well. Yeah, okay. I'm going to share something that uh, I find that I take issue with. I've had this conversation with my wife. A lot of the moms in the 80s and 90s, I feel like, were paired with a bumbling husband or dad. Yes. Right? Yeah. So the man, uh, the man father figure in the, in the relationship tends to be kind of dumb and, uh, or, Accident prone. Yes. Uh, well, that's know. where the comedy comes from. Yes. Yes. And so I've 
I've had to work through some of that. I I, okay. I don't like that. Okay. I don't like that they make the man to feel <laughs> like that they're these like idiotic guys. But the and, the idea but is I laugh. I laugh at them. Laugh I all mean, the time. I, you know. But the idea is that the mom slash wife is there to keep mm-hmm. it all under control and save the day, yes. right? Yes. So. Always. She always, you know, a lot of my characters that I pick in here have a a counterpart, a husband that that needs their help. Oh, that <laughs> on his own would not would not survive. So. I've got a few of those. Um, I've got other ones, maybe that they're not really the helper. They're just also part of the fun or yeah. the yeah. The dynamic, because um, some of the moms actually worked well with mm-hmm. the w- husband that they yeah. paired them with, so yeah. that worked out good, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So no, it wasn't an, a bad thing, but it's yeah. just that's a person. Well, it thing was. A f- I've had to work. With. It's a formula that was for comedy, so that's that's why they did it over and over mm-hmm. again. Because like with any sitcom, we talked about our sitcom. Well, yeah. Once you get a, a formula, they're mm-hmm. gonna run with it because mm-hmm. it, it gets ratings, it makes money, and it's funny, yeah. right? So. Well, and I think on the flip, like 80s and 90s commercials, right? Uh, m- they were very stereotypical. Well, of course. So then the you know the 80s and 90s commercial, the moms were always doing the laundry. The moms were always, yes. you know, and now they've switched that. And now now you see more commercials where dads are feeding the kids. Dads yeah. are, you know, the primary caregiver. So Trying to show that it's not just it's not the moms. Always, that's right. So. That do all of that work. Yes. Well, you better be home when the streetlights come on or you're going to go to bed without your dinner. We're talking about our favorite TV and movie moms of the 80s and 90s. Whether it's feeding the kids, killing cyborgs, or saving them from angry ghosts, moms are always there, as is Rob with his number 10 choice. All right, my number 10 is an animated mom and not even a human. Not even a human. It is uh, Mama Longneck. (laughs) Wow. <laughs> from 1988's <laughs> The Land Before Time. Oh, right. There you go. There you go. So, uh, no, I, I remember this movie very clearly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so she's an Apatosaurus. Nice. I, for those dinosaur people, I'm probably saying that incorrectly. But, That's okay. Um, she's the late mother of the main protagonist, who is uh, uh, Littlefoot, if you remember that movie. I know Littlefoot, yes. With his little crew of uh, Spike and Ducky and Sarah and Peachy, the little flying thing. Anyways. Yes. Um, no, her parting words, sad, there's a very sad, t- and if you have time, you can look it up on YouTube and watch that scene. It, if you don't get emotional, you might want to check your pulse. But no. her last words are, let your heart guide you. It whispers, so listen closely. Nice. So that, that's good motherly advice. Until it is. My number 10 is Mama Longneck. So when you... The Apatosaurus. So when you uh, thought about putting your list together, what was your criteria for... Because uh, you started with the cartoon. Yeah. So that's good. But uh, what yeah. was your criteria to say uh, this... If they have <laughs> if they have wise words <laughs> like that or... Yeah, I think I was looking for... Uh, for uh, like like a true like a motherly you know uh, mothers that were pr- pr- uh, protecting their kids you okay. know uh, yeah, getting yeah, them yeah. out into the world yeah so All right. i was looking for i was looking for some motherly characteristics nice. and yeah what well, you know i think uh we can establish you like cartoons as a kid more than cartoon movies more than mm-hmm. we've given credit to because yeah. We've had Countdown with Music. You've gone to yeah. Land Before Time. We've had others where you go to cartoon yeah. movies. And she may not so you be like my stuff. last animated one. I don't well, know. she might not be. Uh, so. I, well, no, I think she's my only <laughs> animated one. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Before so. we go through this list, uh, do you think we'll have any crossovers? Uh, or do we, we look at mom? We different? might, but uh, I'm gonna. Well, I know for one, we'll have one on our list. That, oh, okay. Uh, that I for sure. If we don't have it. Don't have it. We're, we we weren't doing. We weren't doing we're, the homework. We did right? not do our pre-production, right. as you say. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go over under two because I mm. think my list is. I think it's fair. Gonna that's be fair. different than yours, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna break the rules right out of the gate. I always give you uh, flack for breaking the rules, and people may hate it. But my number ten mom isn't actually a mom. It is a mom oh. figure. It is Jack Butler, played by Michael Keaton from the movie Mr. Mom. Okay. Uh, 1983 film. Uh, basically, Jack loses his job as an engineer at a automotive plant, but his wife, played by Terry Garr, gets a huge promotion, so he stays home, takes care of the house and the kids. A uh, pretty rare storyline, actually, in the early 80s, because as you just said, it was pretty stereotypical that the husband would work, the, the mom would take care of all the kids and everything. But in this case, Michael Keaton... Uh, 
Hilarious movie, by the way. He has trouble at first, but gets really good at the housework. He hangs out with the other women in the neighborhood, the other housewives, if you will. He learns to cook, and he helps his youngest son get rid of his whoopee, a.k.a. his blanket. Um, I love this movie as a kid. I still do. It gives a good look at how hard a mom's work at home is and how dads can take that for granted, which we do sometimes. Uh, so in the end, I think it shows how valuable moms are, even though he's not technically a mom. But he's a Mr. Mom. So, Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. I looked at that. I was trying to think what would be a, a non-traditional mother figure and I, I i considered going yeah. with maybe a, a a dad who was in the place of a mom but well, I, I didn't do it it's mr mom so it's right there in the title yeah. no, and I, it's a great movie if you haven't seen it i've seen you it should watch it's been a very long time so. it's super funny so but yeah all right no, so you good. started with a dinosaur i went with a <laughs> non-mother so we're off and we're off and roaring at this point. oh okay all right so number nine my number nine won't be on your list Oh, okay. All right. Well, it could be. Let's, but. <laughs> let's do that now. Uh, it's Dana Scully from the X-Files. Oh, wow. I didn't even know she was a mom. She was a mom. Oh, okay. There's some controversy around that. Okay. Whether or not it was Mulder's kid or oh, okay. it, it's like it was biologically created. I didn't watch enough X-Files and, to really know that. So, Yeah. Um, so the X-File listeners are probably going to hammer <laughs> us for not getting any of this right. But um, anyways, uh, her... Uh, She's got a quote that says, children aren't born liking sunflower seeds. Uh, environment shapes them. Behavior patterns are taught. So she was, she was very much, she was a doctor and an FBI agent and kind of the smarty pants in the, uh, but, so the reason why I picked her, uh, she's a cancer survivor in the show. She's a cancer survivor. Okay. She's a trauma survivor. Oh. Being that she was abducted by aliens. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so she's an, so then she's an abduction survivor. She's a scholar. She's a doctor. She's a woman of faith. She's tough. Um, yeah. Oh, and there. I this I thought was very interesting. The character is believed to be uh, by some to have initiated a phenomenon referred to as the Scully effect. No. And that is that um, as the character's role as a medical doctor and FBI special agent inspired many young women to pursue, pursue careers in science, medicine, engineering, law enforcement. Um, so anyway, and they, they could actually see a perceptible wow. uh, increase. So in, she's like a mother figure yes. to thousands? Yes. Billions? So she's, yeah. So nice. not only is she a mother within the show, but she raised this little, uh, William was the son's name. Oh, okay. uh, but yeah, gave birth to William in 2001. Oh, okay. uh, Scully named the baby William. Uh, so one can conclude that by stating uh, w that William was named after Bill Moulder. Uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Well, stretch? Yeah. Maybe a stretch. Anyway, but yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, my number nine is yeah. Dennis Scully. Well, our first three have been pretty unconventional and probably not moms think people would have thought of right no. away when they no. thought of this list. So, well, that takes me to my number nine, mm -hmm. which some people will probably think of. Maybe they won't. Uh, but it is one of the funniest moms on my list. It is Judy Geller, played by Christina Pickles from Friends. Uh, she is Ross and Monica's mom. Uh, she's a great character. She gets tons of one-liners throughout the show. Uh, she definitely favors Ross over Monica, and they don't try to hide that on the show very much. Lots of funny scenes from uh, having sex in a bathroom with Jack. That's her husband, while Monica was stuck in the bathtub. Uh, Monica also seen a tape of her and Jack, the husband, uh, that she thought was a different videotape, but apparently they had taped themselves. Uh, very funny scene from Thanksgiving where she answers a ton of questions at once. Uh, it's the one where Rachel makes the trifle. But uh, awesome character, always makes me laugh, and she's one of those perfect uh, side characters within Friends that really adds a lot to the show. But she does love her kids, so that's also a plus as a mom. So. All right, yeah. And who she was played by who? Christina Pickles. Okay. No, yeah. I don't. I, I can't pull her up. Sorry. I, yeah, I'm going to have to. Do you not watch Friends? I I don't. I watched it. You I'm not, watched I'm it. I'm not one of these people that goes back and. You don't know enough of it now. Watch to... it again. Oh, I've seen it yeah. lots of times. It's on no. TBS all the time to rerun. No, so. Friends was one of those shows that I remember in college. Like people would get together and go oh, to yeah. people's houses. And they would, have know, a viewing could, party. Yes. Yeah, uh, you no, should. I, I wasn't in funny. one of those groups. You so. weren't invited? No. My all kids right. watch it now. So, so they're into it now. They should because it's really funny. Maybe you should join them. Yeah, well, my and wife and the kids will watch it, and I'll and I'll watch some of it. So and you just wander off. Yeah. All right. I just remember the monkey okay. Marcel. That was yeah. That's yeah. a good. That's the only part. Okay. I yeah. Oh, and Jill uh, Goodacre. Goodacre in the vestibule. The vestibule. Yeah. It's I a good episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So we're at my number eight. 
Number eight. Uh, my number eight is Irene Walsh. Does that ring a bell? Irene Walsh. Hmm. Played by Mary Ellen Trainer. Mm-hmm. She is the mother of the Goonies. Oh, yes. Yeah. So she's not a very, she doesn't have a very prominent part in the movie. Uh, but I picked her uh, one because she's the mother of a of a of a family yeah. that is very prominent in our lives, right? So most eighties, nineties kids, Goonies, yeah, is a is a like one of the preeminent movies in the in our life, right? So uh, it's in our camp trailer. We watch it every time we go to the beach, and we yeah. You know, so anyway, um, but do you guys look for one eyed Willie? Actually, we camp right around that area, we, okay. and we actually drove past the house, and we <laughs> go over the good. bridge, and we're like, hey, this is the bridge, kid. <laughs> uh, no, uh, another reason why I picked her, in real life, unfortunately, she passed away, but um, in real life, she starred in The Goonies, uh-huh. uh, obviously, Die Hard, mm-hmm. Scrooge, yep. Ghostbusters 2, Forrest Gump, uh, I mean, so some really big yeah. 80s. She's uh, one of those actresses that's like, you see her in a movie and go, hey, that's that, that's her. Yeah, yeah. But you don't always know her name. No. Um, that's her. Uh, one thing that I really liked about her is that she has trouble pronouncing words, a trait that she shares with uh, her son, uh, Mikey, in the movie. During the events of the movie, uh, uh, he makes up uh, like words. Like he'll say retrospective with retropactum. Like he makes weird words, right? Uh, uh, and she does the same thing. Um, uh, and I was thinking of uh, my dad. My, we have kind of a running joke in my family that we mispronounce words. Okay. So um, we uh, we were at the beach, and um, my wife and I were looking for a restaurant, and uh, the name of the restaurant was uh, The Grape Leaf. Nice. Uh, but I, for some reason, it was The Grape Leaf. I don't know. Try to sound fancy. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my sister just a couple of weeks ago, she was in town and she was driving past a little uh, coffee stand and uh, she said, oh, there's a nice mocha stand. No, oh. it's Clearly. an interesting way to sound that mocha. out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, um, and for years, my dad would drive past the golf course and he would yell, um, Fort. Oh, yeah. And then, thought it was Fort. And then we had to correct him that it was actually four. You should just let him have it. Yeah. You don't need to correct him. Sorry. Uh, but <laughs> mom is uh, quoted as saying, Brandon, I want you to keep your brother inside. I don't want him to catch a cold. So she was she's worried about the youngest one. He she had, was. He had some health problems and so, you know, yeah. asthma. And so anyway, she's a mom that played prominent in my life. Played prominent. Grown up. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah. I don't have that on my list, but it is a good one. So, well, my number eight is also a movie mom. Uh, it is Kate McAllister, played by Catherine O'Hara from the movie Home Alone. Uh, so on the surface, you may think she's a terrible mom since she left her kid at home, Kevin. More uh, than once. While they went to Paris. Uh, in the first movie, I get that it was chaotic and not totally out of the realm of possibilities, right? Now, you can say at the airport she should have probably checked all the kids again to make sure, but What's her you excuse know, on the in the rush, second one. Uh, I'm not sure, but oh. in a rush, I could see possibly, but I would still like to think uh, at least at the airport, she would check all the kids. But we need a movie. Uh, in the end, though, what she does do is make a lot of effort to fly back home. She rides in a truck with John Candy. She does everything to get home to take care That's of the kids. That's good. So, however, what you just said a few minutes ago is valid because in Home Alone 2, she's got no excuse. And at that point, she should probably be arrested. So uh, <laughs> when, when you do it the second time, uh, you have nothing, nothing left to say. I mean, uh, so... But the first one, I felt bad. You know, they ran out quick. Things happened. Um, but she really works hard to get back to him, so I give her that. Uh, not that she doesn't work hard in Home Alone 2, but just doing it a second time is uh, pretty criminal at that point. So, uh. <laughs> um, Yeah, no, uh, I consider her as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I like your, I like your uh, assessment of how what she did to get back to him. Yeah, that's the that's the most important I, mom part. I, I thought, right? yeah, that's a really good. Uh, I mean, she was willing to do whatever. Yeah, so. she was trading jewelry for tickets. Yeah. I mean, she was riding, riding in the, the U-Haul, U-Haul with uh, polka polka polka, right? Well, so yeah. polka polka polka. I read somewhere that that was all like uh, ad libbed or something. Oh yeah, he got paid like two hundred dollars for like an hour's worth of work, John Candy, just as a favor to like John Hughes or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. um, okay, no, that's good. Uh, my number seven is Ellen Griswold, oh, played nice. by Beverly D'Angelo. Yeah. Uh, well, this fits right into your "My Husband's a Bumbling Moron." Yes. Yes. <laughs> analysis, uh, but and specifically, 
uh, because I uh, I like the the uh, vacation movies. Yes, but specifically the Christmas vacation movie. Like that, yes. that that's the the mom I'm thinking of. Like yes. when I think of the character, right? So, uh, yeah, played by Beverly D'Angelo. Um, uh, one of my favorite lines in that movie uh, is when she's having a conversation with her daughter Audrey in the kitchen. And the the daughter says, "Do you sleep with your brother? Do you know how sick and twisted that is?" And she says, "Well, I'm sleeping with your father, so don't be so dramatic." <laughs> uh, and then uh, early on the movie, uh, when he's doing his uh, driving, and she says, "Hallowed be thy name, and forgive my husband. He knows not what, what he, he does." does. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, she I, has to do a lot to keep him. Yeah, she's putting out a lot as of fires and under control as possible. Yeah. yeah. So. so I. I just and she's another one that uh, is always kind of in the background. She's always she you know she's flipping on the switch. She's putting yep. out fires. She's mm-hmm. uh, while he's out doing his thing. She's oh, yeah. she's uh, helping out and trying to make things better. So uh, and she's a mom that I, you know I think my wife could probably relate to. A little bit. Oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> Are you locking yourself in the attic very often? So. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, you know the the scene of falling off the uh, when he the ladder. Oh, okay collapses in on itself oh, uh, yeah. yeah last summer i was putting insulation in our shop and the ladder closed in on itself well it, it made a creaking noise and oh, i kind of okay. paused for a minute and i i thought no we're good and then <laughs> and then the ladder just went down the wall and down the uh, wall yeah so my yeah, wa- okay. wife, wife came home and there was a bent ladder laying in front of the well shop, at least you shop, weren't but, bent you weren't uh, hurt right no i wasn't hurt bad well that's but, good yeah um, but at our age, we can't be falling off ladders. No, uh, I, I was limping for a little while. Day. But, yes. So, but, no, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't have her either. I looked at her, but she didn't make the 10. But she's yeah. solid. She deserves recognition. I so, think so. Good for she, you to get there. Yeah. Well, my number seven from television, Jill Taylor, played by Patricia Richardson from Home Improvement. That's your number seven? Number seven. Why? All right. Because that's my number six. That's your number six. So oh, okay. Well, we'll... We, we we can flip flop that yeah, yeah. yeah so uh so for me uh she seemed like the kind of mom you'd want to have if you were a younger mm-hmm. she was really smart she didn't take any crap and kept tim in line mm-hmm. she was she loved the kids but she was also very stern with them when she needed mm-hmm. to be she made sure the house and the kids were taken care of while she was working and she went to school during that show like she that's got right. her master's degree or something um and that's a common theme i think for some of the, a lot of these moms um they were doing a lot of different things but she seemed to genuinely care about her family and friends. And let's be honest, she was a cornerstone of that family. Tim, mm-hmm. as we talked about with Griswold, he's kind of the, he's the tool man, but he could have easily killed himself like 15 times on that show. And <laughs> he could have killed others. Yeah. And if it wasn't for her, that probably would have happened. Mm-hmm. And he barely got himself dressed most days. Um, so, And she was really funny. Uh, you know, I always didn't find Tim Allen the funniest. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the shtick where he grunted and did that yeah. over and over kind of got old. Yeah. But she always brought some good uh, comedy. She, I think she's probably the funniest one. Mm-hmm. On the, her and Al Borland were probably the, oh, actually yeah, yeah. the funniest two yeah. on the show. So. Yeah, no, I, yeah, she's, like I said, she's my number six. So, uh, yeah, accident-prone husband. Uh, she's got three boys. You know, so she's the only woman in the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, your idea, your your comment about her going to school, I'd totally forgotten about that. So oh, yeah. she's, you know, a career woman, was, you know, kind of pushed back on those 80s, 90s stereotypes that we kind of talked about. Yeah. Um, one of the quotes that I put down I really like is uh, she was really quick. Uh, she did not take Tim's uh, crap. No. So, you know, he'd do not his little all. smart ass cra- you know, comments. And uh, so uh, Tim one time says, I didn't bug you during childbirth. And she says, no, but you bugged me during conception. That is correct. (laughs) So those were kind of her quick, uh, her quick uh, uh, comebacks at him. And yeah. yeah. So yeah, Jill Taylor. Yeah. And, And, you know, I was a young teenager when she was on that show because it was a 90s show. Mm -hmm. Um, She wasn't bad looking either. So, you know, looking back as a 90s mom, you know, you think about she definitely looked like a mom. Mm-hmm. But she looked a little better than most of the moms mm-hmm. of the friends that I had. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I yeah. just thought of them as moms. So. Yeah, and she's another one that I I think my wife relates to a little bit because like, you know, he was he was like into fast cars and stuff. Not that I'm into fast stuff, but I it's very I think easy for me to go. Oh no, it'll be fine. We're just gonna do this. And then my wife's in the background going, but I don't know. I I think you might get hurt. I'm like, no, it'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. <laughs> And then I get hurt, and then you know, and then yeah, she was right. She and was right. A lot of times, she was the voice of reason, and she was. So you're right. like the tool man. That's what you're telling me. 
I mean, yeah. you do have these busted up uh, hot rod trucks and things in your garage. So you're kind of yes. like the tool man. I want to so, be, I think. Yeah. We just got to get you a TV show. Yes. So I can play Al. Yeah. Well, uh, I've got a maybe. podcast. So that's, that's right. That's the closest thing. Pretty close. Yeah. yeah. So so was your number six? That was my number and six. That was my number seven. So I guess then I just get to go right to my number six. Yeah, you got a number six. Well, my number six, back to movies, Sarah Connor, played by Linda Hamilton from Terminator 2. Now, she was also a mom in Terminator 1, but uh, it, she sticks out more for me mm-hmm. in Terminator 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, all my previous moms and Michael Keaton, they're getting the job done. But this is my first badass mom, right? She's shooting guns. Mm-hmm. She's fighting a new style Terminator that can morph into whatever they want. She's trying to save her son plus the world at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's doing typical mom stuff in this movie. You usually see uh, taking care of the house. No, she's not doing that. Never mind. She's <laughs> trying to save the whole world, right? She's blowing stuff up. Mm-hmm. She's she's all ripped up. She's been yeah because they had her in like an insane asylum because yeah. of course. From the first one, yeah. uh, she's doing pull-ups, one-handed. I mean, all these things. So, well, and, the, and the first one, she was like a mild-mannered yeah, waitress. She was. Totally different. And then morphed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, Sarah Connor, first badass mom on my list. Uh, mm-hmm. She's fighting Terminator. She's running alongside Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she was crazy. Yeah. But a good mom because she is trying to save her son mm-hmm. from being killed by mm-hmm. the Terminator. Mm-hmm. So, Well, and she's, you know, you, you talk about. Uh, you named another mom earlier that, uh, you know, McAllister. She's trying to do everything she can. To get, here's a mom that's doing it and doing it across time. Across time, yes. Right? So there's another added, uh, added the, element of, yeah. I mean, we're really going the distance. Really yeah, going the distance, know. yeah. And she's, yeah, she's trying to save the whole world and her son. So she's got a, a bigger job than the rest of them. So. Yeah. Um, all right. That's good. My number five. Five. Lu- Lucille. LaRusso. Oh, man. From the Karate Kid. You, you think Daniel's mom is a good mom? We can, well, have, no, no. We can have an argument about that. <laughs> well, I'd be curious to know why you think she isn't a good mom. But So I, I'm going to go. She's she's a single mom. She is. She's trying to do the best she can with what she's got. I guess. You know, she's yeah. got some, some life's handed her some lemons. And so she's moved the kid up and moved to a different, trying to well, trying but, to get, you know. So it, as a single mom, I, I, I know what you're saying, but. They were living in New Jersey, and then one day she's yeah. like, hey, we're moving to California. Yeah. And she tells him, if you watch the movie enough, that she's going to work at a computer place. But then in reality, she ends up being like an yeah. assistant manager at like a yeah. Chinese restaurant or something like that. And yeah. so Daniel got a little misguided, and she told him how great the apartment they were getting were. Yeah. And you and I both know that wasn't a great apartment, right? Yeah. I mean, he met Mr. Miyagi, so that's good. But you know, And she's really not paying too much attention to him. Uh, that, maybe because she's yeah. working a lot, but you know. Yeah, uh, and uh, you go back to the move. I I don't. He didn't. He had no say in it. It just was. No, nah, we're know, just and, going. And so this he. So he was bitter about. Well, that. we're assuming they divorced, mm-hmm. and you'd think. Look, you have to move. You have to move. I got it. Uh, but you'd think you'd try you'd to have some normalcy for the new. Dad. Yeah. Yeah. But but there's a secret underlying. We can talk about that later. The way she left New Jersey so quickly, and they never really talk about the dad or whatever. Yeah. Maybe he was like in the mob or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, one thing that I, uh, uh, in the recent reboot series, she she does acknowledge that she wasn't the greatest mom. Like there's an <laughs> okay. episode where she actually she actually calls that out and she talks about. Well, see, um, there you go. That uh, that she, um, let's see. But, but you give some under- of your defense on why you put her on the list then. Yeah, well, I, I think... I think being a, I've I've not been a single parent, but I think that that couldn't have been an easy decision. You know what? Whatever the decision, whatever was behind it, to move your kid yeah of across the country from New I mean that's as far as you can go. You know, yep. Jersey to California, clear across, it, move him away from his father, from his friends. That couldn't have been an easy decision. So I'm going to have to assume that she was doing the what best she could. She felt was best for her kid yeah. and that was to get him away from that or whatever the thing was and so i, got I don't um, fault her for the move yeah i just feel like once they get out there she's a little detached but they weren't supposed to, i guess the movie if you look back on it they wanted the bond between miyagi and daniel so you can't have her in every scene otherwise it yeah. doesn't work yeah. but i will tell you in the second one she moves to fresno to get a new job and she just leaves Daniel in Los Angeles because he wants to live with Mr. Miyagi. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that's good points yeah. for her either. So, well, and uh, yeah, I found my note here. Uh, in one of the episodes, 
She admits that it was a mistake for her to uproot Daniel's life by moving them to the valley without even talking to him about it first. There you go. So she ignored. Only she owned up to it. And then you could go plus or minus whether this is good or not. Uh, you know, she's very supportive of his life. She drives him sure. to the date. You know, uh, <laughs> now whether or not that was a good thing, it wasn't good. But that's you fine. know, she was uh, trying, and she got that broken down car. She got to get out and push it. And the so, biggest. Uh, station wagon you could possibly yeah, drive yeah. So, so she she was trying so i i right. yeah well, i'll give you that right. one right. that's good right. i didn't even yeah i didn't think about her because i didn't look at her that way but right. uh good well my number five also from a movie ms gump played by sally field from forrest gump good job. uh what would mrs gump do for forrest here i mean she makes sure he can stay in the normal school uh-huh. as they called it in the movie through some personal sacrifice with the principal um, I don't know if principals are supposed to be doing that, but that's for you to decipher. Uh, she always gives Forrest lots of advice to help him out. Um, if it wasn't for her, uh, we may not have had the money to buy the bubblegum shrimp boat because he wasn't going to advertise the ping pong paddle because he said, I only use this. But then yeah. she convinced him that telling one little white lie for like $25,000 mm-hmm. uh, wasn't the worst thing he could do. So, And of course, she coined the phrase, life is like a box of chocolates. Now, he right. says it, but she's the one who actually coined it. Uh, so Mrs. Gump, she's My great. always says. That's movie right. mom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, what would she do for Forrest? Yeah. She did everything to make sure yeah. Forrest was uh, taken care of and that he was going to be just like all the other kids, even though he clearly wasn't. Yeah. Right? But she made sure. So no, that's uh, good. Yeah, not on my list. Didn't even consider what. But yeah, the, you're right. Right. He he had all the, uh, the corrective apparatus for his legs. Yeah, and his she magic got, shoes. That's right. That's she right. Got, she got that, and to call him magic shoes. Right. That's right. To make him feel less uh, ostracized. She that's gave, right. She gave him. It made it fun. Yeah. Ms. She is a good mom. Yeah, Mrs. Gump. That's very good. <laughs> Uh, That's very good. My number four is one that should probably be higher on the list, but she fell down on my list, and uh, uh, is Claire Huxtable. Wow, number four. Yeah, she's she's down on my list. Um, that is something. Yeah, uh, she's a pretty good TV mom. Yeah, all right. She's probably one of the best. Uh, one well, could then, make an art. We'll see how she uh, if she uh, see how number four but, works. Uh, then. So she's an attorney. Yes. She's a mother of five. She's the wife of a doctor. Um, we never see her in the courtroom which I thought was interesting. Uh, she's quick. She's fast. Uh, she's smart. She's got a cool demeanor. Um, I, Although we never saw her in the courtroom, uh, I would not want to be no, no. on the receiving end of hers. Uh, and there's a, a great scene where, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Elvin. Oh, yeah. The, the son-in-law. Yes. Yeah. Married to the, the oldest daughter. Yes. There's a scene where... Uh, th- I think they're eating, maybe in their living room or something. And um, Elvin makes the mistake of, uh, oh, she was gonna she was gonna get something for Mister Huxtable, uh-huh. coffee or something. And Elvin says, oh, I didn't know you did that kind of thing. And she says, uh, what do what kind of thing? And she he says, oh, like serve, yeah, serve like your the men, you know. And then she just goes off on Elvin about you know that that's the kind of thing that goes on in a restaurant and yeah. and just <laughs> like rips elvin and just kind of for me that I, was what I always like got the sense she didn't like elvin too much no wasn't um, the favorite son-in-law no so. but just she was a strong woman and didn't play into the stereotypes and oh, yeah. um no, you know, was hard on her kid but loved her kids and so yeah, yeah. Just claire huxbo was a claire one. claire was great yeah so well that's your four. I'm interested in your top three now because yeah. uh, yeah. we're at four. Uh, well, my number four, also from television, Vivian Banks, played by Janet Hubert in The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So this is the first um, actress that did the mom. Um, this is, in my opinion, the true Aunt Vivian to The Fresh Prince. I wish she hadn't left the show, but that's not up to me. The other actress, she was fine, but she just wasn't the same. But Aunt Viv is awesome. Uh, she can dance. She was in great shape. She's a professor at a university. Uh, she was really attractive, if we're being honest. She doesn't take any crap from anyone, even Uncle Phil. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see her starting to take off her earrings. You better run for your life uh, <laughs> because she's she's coming hot. Uh, I would say when she's angry, she's scarier than Uncle Phil. Like Uncle Phil's scary because he's big, mm-hmm. but when she got mad, uh, the kids knew that. Uh, obviously, she's not doing typical mom things portrayed in the 80s and 90s because they have a butler. They're pretty wealthy. 
Um, but she still took care of the family. She was taking care of Will. She was giving advice to the kids. Um, she was there when they needed them. And uh, she was the reason Will got out to Bel Air in the first place because Will's mom is her sister. And she's the one that convinced Uncle Phil to let him come out and live with them. So Aunt Viv, um, it's easy to say she's the she's the strong one in that family mm-hmm. despite Uncle Phil kind of mm-hmm. taking up the screen with his size and, yeah. and boisterousness. Yeah, I, I love Uncle Phil too, but Aunt yeah. Viv is great. Very, very similar uh, model or you know formula to Claire. The Claire, a little bit. Yeah, where yeah. she's the tough one. And you know. I thought she was a little more aggressive at times than Claire was, but yeah. that show led to that for some of the storylines. Yeah. yeah. Well, and to take on your nephew. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean that, and bring that into your family. Bring him and, out there. You yeah. know, we we brought in a foster kid for the law, and we know how much that that can turn yeah. your you know turn yeah, your family up, and so. Uh, to do that and to, you know, in your family and bring in a nephew that's struggling. So yeah, that was good. And she took him in like he was his, her own. Right? Yep, they all so, did. Yeah. They, uh, they, no. good. And good. I love that show. So it doesn't hurt that Fresh Prince of Bel Air was great. Yeah. So. No, that's good. Vivic, Vivian Banks. Vivian Aunt Banks. Viv. Aunt that's Viv. Right. I, oh, that's right. Uh, did not pick Aunt Viv. Wow. Oh, man. Uh, my, three, my number three is one you've already picked. No, no. Uh, it is Sarah Connor. Oh, from Terminator. we yeah. both went on the yeah. Terminator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my list, I just put badass. She's badass. Uh, she's a mother of a future revolutionary. <laughs> uh, she protected him bravely. Uh, I put, okay, she was wearing a pump. Uh, she had a pump action shotgun. Yeah. And a bandolier full of shotgun shell. She uh, was nuts. She carries the weight of the human race on her shoulders. I mean, that's a lot. That that's, a, a lot. that's a lot. Uh She's the mother of the boy who will be will one day save mankind. She's committed to his safety. That means she'll kill anyone and anything in her path. Um, and then, and then I just point out again that in the first one she was this kind of kindly waitress, uh, and then she's totally different character when oh, you yeah. see her in part two. I mean, she's totally well, different. They put her in that like insane asylum. And she's and old. she just works out and does push ups, yes. pull ups, and she just um, stews on like her. Making sure she yeah. avenges what happened in the first yeah. one, you know, um, and then she just she knows what the future holds, and she'll do anything she can to protect him. Yeah, so, it's uh, great. She's she's a she's a tough mom. Nice. I, I liked her. Somewhere. Well, we said over under two, and we've got two so far because uh, both of us had Jill Taylor. Sh- yep, and, and we Sarah both had Connor. Sarah Connor. Yep. All right. Well, my number three. Uh, I don't know if you'll have this. I'll be shocked. Actually, yeah. um, this is from a movie. Uh huh. Early 80s movie. Okay. Diane Freeling, played by Jo Beth Williams from the movie Poltergeist. Now, Diane definitely is doing a lot of things to be a good mom. She's protecting her kids. She's taking care of the house. Uh, she goes into the Neverworld to bring her daughter back from Crazy Ghosts. Okay. She swims through a mud pit of undead skeletons. Mm-hmm. So she's doing a lot of good things. But I will say, her early mom instincts don't kick in right away. Uh, when chairs are moving across the floor and her daughter's moving across yeah. the floor for no reason, uh, that's not fun and funny. That's a red flag, and she should have packed up and immediately left the house. Like, yeah, they, we're leaving now. Yeah. They do that's try to play off the comedic part of that. Yeah, like the like, chair moves, and they go, oh, isn't that great? No, yeah. that's not great. Uh, we should be leaving tonight. Yeah, right? watch this. Yeah. yeah, she calls everyone, watch this. Yeah, then, I know. Yeah. Like, oh, she, right. she tells him, oh, it's been doing it all day. It's great. Uh, they should have bailed immediately. Like, oh, no, we're not living here. Yeah. We got to go. Uh, but after that, she's awesome. Uh, and I got to say, she's very uh, – I love Jo Beth Williams when mm-hmm. I was younger. Mm-hmm. thought she was very uh, attractive. She, yeah. Mom, um, and in this movie, uh, none of my friends' mom <laughs> looked like Joe Beth Williams in the eighties. <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, whose mom? Whose yeah. mom gets to look like that?" And then she got that cool, like, gray stripe in her hair at yeah. the end and everything. So, but well, uh, she's floating yeah. around there in the bed, you know, with her little half but shirt on. She's wearing one of those like a t-shirts that was a jersey yeah. of no particular team <laughs> and had a little, random number yeah, on it. Yeah, so little. So, that's all she had on. And, yeah, yeah. No, she, mm. so it was good. But yep. she does save. Uh, Carol Ann from right. the Never World. She comes out with all the goo the all goo. over her. So That's right. yeah. come to the light. Come to the light, That's children. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're at my number two. Number two. All right, my number two. Uh, I when I was reading my list back to my wife, she she questioned whether or not this is playing by the rules. But oh, here, I don't we, go. Care. here we go. Well, I started out with Mr. Mom, so yeah. So okay, here we go. All right, so it's Padme Amidala. All right. From 1999. You snuck Phantom it right Menace. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's um, a mom? 
She's well, yeah. not a mom in Phantom Menace, though. No. She's not a mom until the third but, one. All right. But she is the mom of <laughs> Darth Vader. Uh, right. <laughs> who then. It's not a good mom. Who then. <laughs> you know, the, So then you've got. Uh, um, oh, no. Luke. She's not the mom to Darth Vader. Uh, no. She's yeah. Luke and yeah, Leia. Yeah. Luke and you. Leia's mom. She's a wife to Darth. Vader. Yes. So she's 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 packing a lot of baggage. She's got she's got she this. Is. She's the husband that you know turns out to be one of the biggest villains in movie movie history. history yep. And gives birth to the two kids that go on to you know fuel a, 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 a um, you know movie history. Uh, so so I'm not got, questioning your choice here. Yeah. What I'm going to say is I cannot believe. She's in front of Jill Taylor and Sarah Connors and Claire Huxtable. But she's, like, she's the mother the of rankings? the Star Wars franchise. I mean, I got that, but <laughs> Luke is not. Luke's annoying and kind of a oh a well, I, yeah, jackass. We, we in could the movie, we could so. debate all day long whether or not you know he's but that kind might of a be whiny his, little brat. That might be but, his uncle and aunt's fault yeah. since he actually grew up with that's them. That's true. So. <laughs> see, uh, but no. Then if you just like kind of do some uh, uh, character analysis, she uh, she's a queen. Uh, she's the queen of Naboo. Yes. She fought bravely to liberate her people during the Trade Federation's invasion. <laughs> okay. I mean, everybody knows that. <laughs> she, everybody. That's right. She became one of the most respected political figures in the galaxy. Yeah. She participated in many of the Clone Wars, not just politically, no, I but she you. was down on the field. She was. Right? Uh, One could say she was a liability at times. But that, right. Um, she was appalled by the dissolution of the Republic and the creation of the Galactic Empire. Yeah. She signed something called the Delegation of 2000. It was kind of a precursor to the rebellion. Um, she was strangled and left for dead. Um, and then, unfortunately, she kind of died of a broken heart. She's only 27. She was a young mom. Yeah. Um, she played a vital role in the politics and events surrounding the Clone War. Uh, I mean, I can go on. Eventually, right. Potomac's children would play a major role in the fragmentation of the Empire and the redemption of Anakin. So All there's right. there's something about legacy there. Okay, she's got a legacy. I think. Mom's I, I still think her above some of your other choices is strange, but uh, <laughs> you are free to do whatever you want. <laughs> That's right. It was my list. It so, is your yeah. list. So you, my I wife, don't agree you, with uh, it though. <laughs> yeah, your wife's right on this one. Probably not the first time you've heard that, right? So right. Hence wife, the conversation we're know. having today. Yes, that yeah. is correct. Yeah. Well, my number two is an actual thing uh-huh. an actual mom uh it's estelle costanza played by the late estelle harris from seinfeld uh it was really hard for me not to put her at number one because she might be the funniest mom mm-hmm. on this whole list she is the funniest mom on this whole list her interactions with george and her husband frank are awesome i think frank and estelle are the two best parents yeah on tv ever they're hilarious her voice and delivery yeah. when she's yelling is so unique but so funny and she plays um, a character on toy story she does. Right? She's one of the uh, characters on the not the uh, she's Mrs. One of potato, potato Head. head. Yeah, yeah so, so so people can hear that voice. Oh yeah, but in in Seinfeld, I mean, she's doing it all. She's making paella. Mm-hmm. She plays mahjong. She's getting eye jobs. Uh, you just never know what she's doing. She's yelling at uh, uh-huh. George all the time. Well, and I was gonna uh, say, and she's got George as a son. <laughs> she's got George. That as a son. alone is that can be a battle yeah. at times. So yeah, it, you know, he got uh, caught in the living room the one time. You know self-gratification That's right. and she threw her back out had to go in traction so he's causing her a lot of problems right so but maybe my favorite episode is when george's fiance has a doll that looks exactly like his mom and he gets so freaked out about it he has it literally with him uh in the coffee shop and he's trying to eat and it's yelling at him in his mom's voice like <laughs> uh she's like about his clothes telling him why do you need a you need a new shirt all these things. and he's yelling back at this doll because it looks exactly like his mother, and everyone in the place is looking at him like he's a weirdo. But, of course, George is a little neurotic and crazy, so, of course, a doll would talk to him. But, yeah, still Kit Stanza, uh, funniest funniest mom uh, I've seen on TV. So, Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. Poor George. Poor like George. Kid. Well, poor, George. poor mom. Right? Poor mom. I mean, I, Frank would have been a tough dad to have, too. So Yeah, that's, right. that's true. Well, we've gone number 10 through number 2. So before we reveal our number ones, uh, let's head to the cut line. line. Well, as we put our list together, that's an aggressive sound. We (laughs) often find it very difficult to rank just 10 in each category. So for this segment, we will each identify two moms Mm -hmm. that just fell out of our top 10. Uh, Hopefully, 
Uh, I can't imagine who would have been worse than Padme, but somebody will fill out. <laughs> we will also identify an honorable mention, which is a mom we didn't see or maybe appreciate the first time around. Might have seen it, just didn't appreciate her. Uh, but watched again maybe sometime later and thought, hey, she's doing a good job. Good mom. Yeah. So, Rob, go ahead and give us your first cut. Yeah. Uh, so, my first uh, cut is not a good mom. Oh, nice. But she's, she is a mom. Yes. Uh, it's Mama Fratelli from the Goonies. <laughs> Back to the Goonies. Yeah. She's uh, a good mom for her two kids. Okay. So, that, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, there's some things that uh, she's, she's, uh, I will acknowledge that she's greedy. She's uh, a bad person. She's not a great but person. But she does yeah. love her yeah. sons, I think, a um, little. But she's driven. She's she got uh, some driven characteristics. I mean, she's wa- she wants that, uh, you know, she got her kids out of jail. Oh, she, yeah. I mean, she. so when she wants something, yeah. she, she can get it done. Um, she was also going to cut a kid's tongue out. She was going to cut Chunk's yes. tongue out. Yes. So, so actually, I put that down here. One of my notes <laughs> says she is fast with a switchblade. She is. So, uh, I mean, she'll she'll cut somebody. For her kids, right? Yes. Uh, she had a she had a son that had some uh, disabilities mm-hmm. uh, caused possibly by a mom. <laughs> yes. So we so we got to go back to that. Um, but mom in real life, the uh, Anne Ramsey that played her uh, also pl- uh, played throw mama from the train. The mama. From, yeah. So there's a she mama liked to connection be, there. Uh, those uh, annoying moms. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, some other things. Yeah, I said fast with a, sl- a switchblade. She can drive really well. In the opening okay. scene, that she's the driver. She she's the driving driver. that thing through the four wheel drive. She's doing the, the on the beach. That's mom. That's, that's Mama for Telly. Um, and uh, then she's just trying to keep her family together. She is. I mean, the kids are kind of. they're kind of a screw up, and she's trying. She's, <laughs> she's trying, trying to keep it together. The kid, uh, well, the one son falls on the log, does the splits, yeah. gets his bits there, you know. And she she is genuinely concerned about about her, her son. kids. Make no sense to me though. Like, there's got to be multiple dads in this scenario, right? I because yeah. those two don't look related. Yes. That's true. I th- I don't know. They, yeah. It's an odd situation. Yeah. yeah, they got two just randos and go. Oh, your brothers. Right. Well, and the one the one son is a singer. He can sing. He's a, he's got yeah. some decent chops. Like some and so opera. She's she's obviously exposed him to some culture. <laughs> uh, so it's not all bad. But all, all right. right. So my first cut is Mama Fratelli. I got you. Well, that's an interesting one. My first cut back to television. Marge Simpson from The Simpsons. Uh, so she may have the dumbest husband of all of the dumbest husbands, right? Because mm-hmm. Homer is literally probably one of the dumbest. He's a cartoon, but if he was a person, one of the dumbest yeah. people you could probably imagine. So mm-hmm. if it wasn't for Marge, nothing would function in that household. Uh, I don't know how anything functions in that household anyway. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he just drinks beer. He kind of works at the nuclear factory. He's kind of works. He's Homer. <laughs> I mean, he's a complete disaster, and Marge somehow still... 30 years later is raising those kids Mm -hmm. cooking food and her kids are kind of a handful they are a big handful lisa's not the worst one but the other ones can be uh you know bart and even uh maggie can be a little bit but yeah march if it wasn't for her that uh that whole family would just fall apart so gotta give it to gotta give it up to her so yeah no i think she's a good example of that mom we've talking about that are keeping the well yeah because homer's a disaster so do you remember uh this is a, a Simpsons reference, but uh, he he used to do that thing where he'd—I don't even know what episode it was or why, how often he did it, quite honestly. <laughs> but where he'd lay on his side and he'd do this. Oh yeah, the spin thing. around. Yeah. yeah. Do you Great. remember doing that? I tried. I remember one time at your house, <laughs> you cleared the kitchen. You know that little dining area, and you you moved the table, and you did uh, that right in that spot. Did Just, I? Did, but I probably did. I do it good. Yeah, well, I I can see you doing see it. You doing. you did it really well. I think your mom was watching. Anyway, I was like, why why did we do that? Anyway, why not? Anyway, it's fun to do dumb things sometimes, uh, right? Plus, we were young, so it's good. All right, are we in my cut one? We are cut two, actually. Oh oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah your cut yeah. one was uh, uh, for Telly. Uh, for Telly, uh, my next cut is Roseanne. Ah, nice. Yeah. Um, I just uh, you know, again she. Didn't yeah. make the list in Padme. Like, Padme, yeah. Roseanne wasn't great, yeah. but she was probably better. Galactic Padme. legacy, though. <laughs> you know. Well, Roseanne's got like Indiana legacy. Or That's something. true. There you go. But no, uh, the thing I liked about mine is that uh, their home was often troublesome, uh, low income, uh, you know, dysfunctional kids, uh, you know, um, equally dysfunctional husband. Sometimes, I mean, uh, Dan can be kind of a, you know, yeah, 
a handful. Uh, so anyway, and she kept it all together, and uh, a lot of times had uh, there was kind of a message at the end, and um, yeah. yeah. So I thought she was, she, and she was more of a realistic mom than what had been on TV. I think we talked about that once. Yeah, on, we uh, got that. previous episode. But yeah. um, uh, one thing that uh, a quote that I like there was a scene between her and DJ the son, and she's a DJ DJ says. Was I an accident? And Roseanne says, no, DJ, you were a surprise. <laughs> DJ says, oh, what's the difference? Roseanne says, well, an accident is something that you wouldn't do over again if you had the chance. A surprise is something you didn't even know you wanted until you got it. DJ responds, oh, was Darlene an accident? And Dan says, no, Darlene was a disaster. <laughs> so there's... There you go. You know. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Roseanne. Yeah. She's a good... She's, probably I a, thought she was a decent mom. Probably she's a trying. Probably a solid choice. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, my second cut, uh, another television mom, Cindy Walsh, played by Carol Potter in Beverly Hills, 90210. That's right, the mom to Brandon and Brendan, Brenda. Didn't even go there. Uh, Holy cow. Yeah, I mean, she was, again, taking care of the house. Uh, the dad worked all the time, so he, he was a big lawyer, so he wasn't home. She was, a lot of times, all the teenagers would be over at their house, so she's cooking food for all of them. Uh, Brenda's got her drama with Dylan. Mom helped mm -hmm. out. Uh, Brandon's got her drama with Emily, his drama with Emily Valentine. Mom helped out. Um, she was kind of in the living room. She was kind of everybody's mom. because What did, what did she do? Did she have a job? Stay no, home. She was a stay-home mom. Okay. But a lot of the other moms on the show, Kelly, Steve, Luke's, Luke Perry's mm -hmm. mom, uh, Dylan's mom, they were all disasters. Right. So they kind of looked to her as like, because they would say, you've got the mom and the dad, and the rest of them all kind of had these crazy situations. Mm -hmm. Dylan's mom was a kind of an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve's mom was a former TV star that was really never around. Uh, Kelly's mom had kind of some of her own problems. She was going out with different men. She was getting married to other people, things like that. So... They kind of thought that Cindy Walsh was like the ideal, she and they was, would go to her. Yeah. So yeah, so she kind of helped hold the uh, Walsh household together. Nice. That's so. a, yeah, that's a good one. I and I will admit something publicly. I was never into nine hundred two one zero. I just no, you know that's I, your own. Fault. I couldn't do it. I couldn't you do it. Could have so. done it. No, you would have learned a lot. I don't know. They that taught that's a lot a of us at that age <laughs> a lot of good things. All right, you should go back and watch it now. You'll see how no. fantastic. it the is. The only thing. That I remember from that show is uh, I the hair. Yeah, I never. Uh, I we only went to the barber. Yeah, I never went to like a Stylist. like super cuts or whatever. I, I never you. did that one time. Yeah, uh, and I went in with a picture of Christian Leitner. Oh, I wanted my hair like Christian Leitner, which was a, did it turn out? I don't know. Okay, I don't, I don't know. pretty close. To, yeah, we'll have to put some pictures up and I'll people show like you Christian from. Leitner. Um. Anyway, all right. Honorable all right, mention. Uh, honorable mention. Okay, I'm. I like this one. Oh, okay. So, my honorable mention is Mrs. Baskin. Oh. The mother of Josh Baskin from 1988's Big, starring Tom Hanks. <laughs> okay. This mom is, is she's gotten no no love, and okay. here's why. So, uh, we we could do a little more unpacking of this movie. This movie is, is supposed to be a fantasy comedy yeah. kind of thing. We'll do this movie at some point. It is not it's a <laughs> pleasant movie. So, uh, so he uh, just he makes a wish on the Zoltar machine. Oh, yeah. He goes from a twelve year old to a thirty year old man, mm -hmm. right? Okay, but prior to the transformation, she's loving, caring, protecting. She's taking pictures. She's like, tell him, don't get on the dangerous ride. She wakes him up for school. She does laundry. She's breakfast. She's cleaning house. She catches him up past midnight talking to Billy on the walkie-talkie. Walkie-talkie. She, she was so cool about it. She's yeah. like, oh, come on now. Right? It's great. He turns into a 30-year-old man. Yes. We forget that in from that lens, in that movie, from Josh's lens, it's a fun fantasy movie, blah, blah, blah. Never mind the fact that he sleeps with a, no, a woman. Of course. She, you know, <laughs> does she know he's sleeping with a 12-year-old? Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in, in mom's eyes, he'd been kidnapped. Uh, yeah. Right? Um, Although she's not working too hard to look for him. She's that, at home. That's a whole other thing. So. Is how, I mean, it's not like they have a whole sub, uh, you know, sub story of them out, look, like, no. canvassing. The, they don't. No. She's um, just at the house waiting for him to call, apparently. Yeah. So. Uh, but then there's this really great phone call scene where uh, Josh, as 30-year-old Josh, calls mom to say that Josh is fine. He's fine. Yeah. And then she says, well, can you sing the song? that I sang to him as a little boy. And then he goes, memories, like the corner of my mind, Mr. Watercolor, memories. Right. And then she starts crying and um, 
It's yeah. a great scene. It's you, really you emotional. You make us all cry now. It's really emotional. I know. Uh, but yeah, so Mrs. Baskin, I is my honorable mention. Nice. Because she's not a mom that we often refer to, but she's yeah. a mom that uh, kind of got the short end of the stick. Short end of the Zoltar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, my honorable mention is television. Sophia Petrillo, played by oh. the late Estelle Getty from the Golden Girls. I've talked about Golden Girls before. Uh, I thought she was hilarious. Um, she basically this. She was the one that could kick back on B. Arthur and the other girls. The, the one liners. Um, I didn't see the show obviously till later, but she kept the other. Like I said, the others on her toes. Blanche was her favorite one to mess with because I think she thought she was like entitled or whatever. But and she had some wisdom and experience from time to time. But I think she was just good for her one-liners and she was funny and she was a perfect compliment to the rest of the ladies on the show. So I got to go with her. I looked at her several times. And several times. I thought, no, I, I nope. And you said, I said, nope. In the Padme of my list, Padme <laughs> is much better. And Mama right? Fratelli. And Mama. I, yeah. I don't mind Mama Fratelli. Yeah, Padme is the odd. Padme really that, that bothers you. It's not a bother. It just it's odd <laughs> compared to the rest of what you have. So well, it's got legacy on the edges of our chairs. Since yeah. Padme was number two, yeah. what could number one be, Rob? Well, I'm thinking the same thing about you. I'm looking at your list. Oh yeah, I'm kind of stumped. Oh okay. At to as to what your number one would it's be. Not that stumped, oh wait, but... I know what it is. You don't. I do. All right. Okay, but my number one, I don't think you have it. Is uh, interesting enough, she doesn't have a first name. She's either oh, just nice. known as uh, the old lady or Mrs. Parker oh. from The Christmas Story, played nice. by Melinda Dillon. Gotcha. Um, it's a good one. Yeah. I uh that movie was a very popular one in our you know in the holiday in our in our house and um but yeah she is um she's the mother of Randy and Ralphie she's the wife of Miss, Mr. Parker also known as the old man um she's harried but loving like she's got kind of this like uh um uh, kind of a uh, chaotic life but uh, she's she's loving she's calm she's patient she's caring she's selfless um, unfortunately, Melinda uh, uh, Dillon did pass away in uh, 2022. Uh, um, she was 83. I didn't know that. Oh, man. Um, also, in a couple of uh, the actress, Melinda Dillon, she was in Harry and the Hendersons, another great wow, good uh, one. Uh, 80s movie. <laughs> uh, and Close Encounters, uh, which is, uh, is another one that I really loved. Uh, both played moms, m- played moms in both those. She and seemed she, like a good mom right? part, right? Um, uh yeah. So, and then I put she knew Lone Ranger's nephew's horse's name. Yeah, that's good. It was Victor? Uh, she corrected the husband on the fragile, fragile. You know, and she did it very uh, politely. She did it. Maybe you know. she broke it um, after yeah. all. So, um, and then then the the two scenes that really stand out for me is there's Randy under the sink. Yeah. Um, and she just lets him kind of sit in there and cry, and she gives him a glass of milk, and then. Uh, Ralphie's glasses when he yeah, after the fight, for him. yeah, she covers for him, yeah, and I just it. thought that was re- you know, yeah. and Dad doesn't even catch on, and she also washed his mouth out with soap. Yes, so you know, so she uh, was tough too, right? Yes, so she was a mom that, yeah, I just I always really liked that mom. Nice. Well, so my, number one. my number one, which you, you didn't get. Okay, I didn't. Tell me, I haven't said it yet. No, no, you just said you knew who it was. So tell me who you think. It I would have. I would have thought your number one was Claire Huxtable. It is. Yeah, it, absolutely correct. So wow. through all of that, it is Claire Huxtable. You had her way too low. Um, everything you said is right. She's beautiful. She's a lawyer. She takes care of the house. She takes care of the kids. She's really smart. She can sing. Um, she dances. Yeah. Uh, she like like she. If they were like writing or picturing what a perfect TV yeah. mom was or what you think your '80s mom should be. Mm-hmm. That was her on screen yeah. all the time, right? So when the kids got out of line, she let them have it. Mm-hmm. When she needed to, she hugged them and loved them. Like she didn't take, like, you know, uh, it's you know Bill Cosby that a little bit too. But if you know any of the girls tried to give her one liners or something like that, she's like, no, I'm not falling for that. Mm-hmm. Like I've already been there, I've already seen that. So yeah. no, she uh, she epitomized probably what everybody would think if you yeah. were making a mom. Mm-hmm. That's her, like successful. Loving, uh, yeah, she's the kind of the whole package. Well, and I'm going to say something. That I I really have no business uh, chiming into this part of the conversation, but I would imagine too uh, that for uh, women and children of of color growing yes. up, that this mom, she's huge. She she played prominently and what yeah. was what could have been which was different than what they had been presented 
Yeah, because prior, they made her. I mean, and I say that very respectfully because well, yeah. I can't even begin no. to. Well, they made uh, her. You know, they really, made her successful. Yeah. They made the family just look like an average everyday family. Right. There were, they didn't have to go through these trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. They weren't poor. They weren't this. Mm-hmm. They were just. They were like every other what you would say white family mm-hmm. was on TV. Yeah. Now they were portrayed as African Americans, and guess what? It was a big deal. So mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of things on it, and yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. obviously, she's showing that she could do it all, yeah. right? So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so she's my number one. Yeah, I kind of I saw that coming. You saw it coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So our over under was three or two. two. I said, and, and I we had think three. we had three. Yeah, Jill so. Taylor, Sarah Connor, and Claire, Claire Huxtable. Huxtable. Yeah, yeah, that's not too bad. No, that's not bad. Well, a couple others I oh researched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a list. So uh, let's see. Elise Keaton, Family Ties. Yeah, pretty good. I had her on my list. Mrs. Garrett, although she wasn't the mom of all four girls in Facts of Life, she was a mom figure to them. Okay. So she took yeah, care yeah, of them. Yeah. Uh, Maggie Seaver, Growing Pains, easy. Yeah. Uh, Peggy Bundy, Married with Children, a different kind of mom, but a mm-hmm. mom, right? So mm-hmm. Angela Bauer, who's the boss. Uh, another, oh, yeah, had her. Another big mom type right there. Mm-hmm. So I um, also had on my cutting room Poltergeist Mom. I just put Poltergeist oh, Mom. yes. That was she good. She is not a cutting room person. Um, uh, I had Marge Simpson on there. Nice, nice. job. Uh, here's an interesting one that we could have unpacked a little bit. Not a great mom, but Mrs. Voorhees. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's the opposite of what we're trying to do yeah, here, right? Okay. So um, I think then, when you murder 12 camp counselors, you get to be out of the good mom. I mean, well, you stretched Fratelli, well, right? Yeah. But uh, I imagine Fratelli's killed people yeah, too at this you, point. So. You probably, yeah, you probably couldn't justify any of that. <laughs> but, um, uh, and then uh, uh, Janine Stifler. No, okay. Yeah. Not, not Again, not a great mom. Yeah. 99? But. Right, yeah, that that's, just that's crept in. That's cutting it. That's cutting it close. But to be fair, she coined uh, whatever you think of her as a mom. the The term MILF came out of that movie yes. and from Mrs. Stifler, right? Yep. And Stif- yes. and it, her her correct name is Stifler's mom. So Stifler's if you're gonna get mom. it right, yeah. you gotta say it Stifler's the right mom. Way, so. uh, some other ones on my list: Lorraine McFly, Back to the Future. It's uh, uh, a and, questionable. And mom. I toyed with putting the Toy Story mom on there. Yeah, she was, was doing a little unpacking there, but yeah, yeah, she wasn't anyway. bad. Yeah, Yeah. McFly's mom is not a good mom, I think, because she's a good mom after the uh, they go back in time and then come back again. But at the beginning, I think she's kind of uh, drunk and she's throwing cakes around and she just doesn't seem very nice to the the kids. Throwing things in the dehydrator. Well, she's got a kid in jail. Yeah, and then she tries to you know sleep with her son, so that didn't help. Jailbird (laughs) Joey. So, all right, well, not too bad. That brings us to the end of this episode. Of Totally 80s and 90s Recall, we hope you've enjoyed our Mother's Day extravaganza. If you like this podcast, please hit that subscribe button. We like to have lots of subscribers and share it with a friend. Then head on over to Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us feedback. And five stars, which will help the show grow. Plus, our mothers will thank you later. Rob and I love hearing from our listeners, so please leave us a message on Instagram, Twitter, or our website, which are all included in the show notes. You can also email us at 80s, 90s, recall at gmail.com. With comments or show ideas you may want to hear in the future. And we love hearing from our listeners. So what is our assignment for next time? Our assignment for next time. Uh, Exciting. A few weeks back, I asked our listeners to send us their favorite 90s songs. Um, So after going through all the responses, which we got quite a few, we will be introducing a 25-song playlist from our listeners uh, of the 90s. So we'll be doing that and seeing what they came up with. Okay. That will be fun. And you will know nothing about it until it starts. Okay. So So pretty diverse diverse. selection. Yeah. 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 Actually, it's a pretty, I was uh, worried there'd be some weirdo songs on there, but actually all pretty good songs. Okay. So. All right. Well, I'm excited. Kudos to the listeners. All right. So. There you go. Well, you got anything else? I got nothing else. All right. Fancy goodbye? Nope. Yep. Peace out.